we're going to move forward to uh, a longtime collaborator, actually, uh, Lee Brighton, who's the President and Chief Learning Strategist for Virtual Entertainment. And uh, I've collaborated with Lee so many times, uh, most recently on an augmented reality teddy bear fighting application, which, if it sounds brutal, it is in a cute way. And uh, she was, uh, she and her colleagues pretty much absorbed an entire team I had at the Master of Digital Media program. And for a two week rapid prototyping cycle, uh, they, so they were uh, mentored and guided in solving a specific problem that they had with this application. So uh, Lee is no stranger to the world of education and I'm hoping that we'll learn a lot about uh, the, the different types of initiatives she's up to and uh, her take on learning at a distance. So take it away, the real Lee Brighton. Thank you so much. I've logged out, I've come back in. Hopefully everyone's got their right name back. My one desire for this next 20 minutes, can I behold everyone their own names? And I'll just keep mine. Thanks, Patrick. Yes, it's been great fun working with you uh, on various projects. At the moment, a lot of our work is centered around VR and AI. And that's the space where we've taken control and we are certainly pushing uh, forward very aggressively in that space. Um, and I would say without a doubt, we're on the leading edge of it. And the reason that we've done that is, I'm certainly an educator from way back. I left uh, some time ago. But when I first put my head in VR in 2016 in the first commercial versions that were coming out, I just was like, wow. This is what I've waited for. This is what every classroom should have. Certainly, we need to have teachers and they need to be guiding and coaching. But the opportunity for student-led, immersive learning inside of VR is just amazing. The experiential aspects where you can do things, you're surrounded in 3D worlds. It's just until you've actually experienced it, you can watch all the videos you like. It's nothing like it. And if you've experienced bad VR, maybe in the early days or some students made you something and hadn't quite got the frame rates, just put it aside. You know, you, just because you have one lot of bad pasta, you don't discount all pasta. So let's, you know, keep it in reality and go, there's good and maybe there's some interesting VR. But you have to get your head in some good VR and you have to experience what it's really like learning in that space because truly there's nothing like it. But the more I started to engage in this learning and, and really get into it, there was a piece that was missing. And of course it came back to the fact that I'm an educator. Where was the talking and the communication? People kept putting text boxes up in front of me. I'm a person that really doesn't like reading. I seriously don't like reading. I hate reading text on TV screens. It's got the slightest movement and it's really uncomfortable for me to read. So you put that right here in front of me and I wasn't enjoying it. Sometimes people would pre-record interaction, but I was like, you know, we've got this really smart AI and I get we're doing amazing things in vision, but there's NLP, natural language processing. We should be bringing that inside of VR. So for the past two years, two and a half years, that's what my team's done. We are 36 people. We're primarily still Vancouver based, but the good thing about being digital by design, as Mark Zuckerberg called it, is now we're employing all over Canada. But um, inside of that, we have been working creating a platform that enabled us to have virtual reality and our artificial intelligence characters having unscripted conversation back with us, back with our learners. That's really exciting to me because now I can create learning experiences where learners are totally in control. It's student-led, it's personalised, it's adaptive. All these fantastic things that, you know, they just totally change the paradigm. Do they discount teachers? No, we still need our teachers to help us with the initial learning. What VR does really well is simulate or create role plays or, or allow you to practice what you've actually learned, to be part of it and to engage with it. That's what it's so magical about. So what I bought for you today, and the other part, and I don't want to, I mean, given COVID, it's 100% scalable. 
This is an, I should have brought it down already. This is an Oculus Quest in its little case. I can take it out if you like. It's a headset. It's two controllers. No computers. No wires. Just download the application. I bought this in Best Buy for 540 bucks. It's not over-the-top expensive. Vancouver School Board has hundreds of these. They're rolling out VR. Their Audrey is way ahead of the game in this space. But it's also any time, any location, and it's just available when you are. So maybe you don't feel like learning something at this point because it's really noisy or there's distractions or you have to help. But it can always be learned at another time. And that's where we're starting to look at what's a new paradigm of learning because it doesn't mean that we can always do the learning at the same time. It's just sometimes not convenient in these new worlds that we live in. But a lot of the work that we're doing at this stage is certainly helping in the high school and the upper. We're working in language learning where people come in and actually practice speaking. We're working allowing people to practice doing interviews. One of the things that a lot of people are going to be looking to do, um, given what's happening, and that's uh, Vancouver School Board's using it for year 10, 11, and 12 students to actually practice. We're using it with newcomers around Canada, where they're actually practicing in preparation for their jobs. But one of the areas that's super important to me, and it was one of the things that our team really directed us to do, COVID hit, two days later, we were all scattered and we went, you know, we need to regroup and we need to understand what we really want to work on. Our world's just turned upside down. We really don't know what's going to happen. What's the key thing that you want us to actually focus our tech? Amazing tech, where can it do the most good? And education certainly came up by some of the team members, but the thing that really hit home was they were like, you have to make something to help help the healthcare workers. You have to enable them to practice. The colleges aren't going to be able to train people. We've already had a shortage of healthcare workers. Let's focus on doing that. So the team worked out where we should go, what we should do. And I want to show you in a second a video clip. Now, you have to understand that this looks flat and Zoom's actually messing up the animation a bit of it so it doesn't, the mouse not going to sync properly. But this is the guy that you're going to see in there. This is an animated, sorry, this is an AI character. He has personality because we give all of our characters personality. So we call them virtual humans. Think of it like the film industry. We give them a backstory and a personality and how they act. But you'll see him on the screen. And the hands that you're going to see, that's the actual person in the training. Okay, so they've got that headset that I just showed you on their head. And they are actually having a conversation. This is unscripted. If they went back in the next day, which they do when they're practicing for their healthcare training, and they spoke to this gentleman again the following day, he's going to answer them different things because different things have happened in his world. And they're going to ask different questions because different questions have happened. But I'll shut up and play the video. Good morning, Mr. Bauer. How are you feeling today? I had trouble sleeping yesterday. I felt a bit short of breath. That must have been worrisome, Mr. Bauer. Were you able to breathe more easily sitting up? Yeah, sitting up helped. I'm also out of breath when I walk to the bathroom. Let me check your vital signs. Your pulse is a bit fast. Have you taken your heart medications this morning? No, I should probably do that. Yes, let me get those for you. Let your nurse know that you are having some shortness of breath and she will follow up with you. That's great. So Thanks, Lee. That's awesome. It gives you a, a little bit of an inkling on the kind of work we do. What we're looking to do, you can imagine right now, this is chalk and cheese. Right now, students are studying and they're practicing. They do 210 hours of lab work. 
and they do that with plastic mannequins. They pretend to give them a drink. They pretend to interact with them. They can't practice the important conversations that they have. What we're looking to do is change that. And I really want to finish on a challenge. I want to challenge you to think about how you can move into this kind of space. We're just one company in this space, but there's plenty of opportunity for teachers to be a part of this, for educators to be a part of this. We need to lift our game to elevate. This is an opportunity where our students can totally be immersed in learning and be a part of, of just pushing it forward. And I, I really want to encourage people to look at education as, oh no, this is not, not from the point of view of this isn't fun now because our students aren't here. This is an opportunity where we can look at how we can embrace some of the new technologies. That's great. Thanks so much, Lee. Yeah, we'll come back to this um, in a round of questions because uh, there's definitely, you're bringing up a lot of what I wanted to get to after in our, in our discussion about uh, the different roles of technology and how they can increase that those types of interactions that you're so uh, well articulating. So thank you so much.